Well, a quick word about what? About Ukraine. It's a mess, isn't it? Um, but now we have a new dynamic, of course, with Trump and as president-elect of the United States of America. Due to take office, I always get this mixed up, on the 20th of January with his inaugural address. The 20th of January, he starts. Um, and that just changed the dynamic immens immensely for Ukraine and Russia and the world, actually, uh, with our new emperor. Now, the situation is not just that Trump is changing. We have other changes, too, in the sidelines. We've got uh, Jonathan Powell being made uh, the U.S. Sorry, the U.K.'s, the Britain's U security advisor. Interesting because although Britain has always been the hawk on Ukraine since Boris Johnson's days, since the beginning of the current war, um, and Britain has been the lead in stiffening the sinews and making everybody fight. Boris, you know, stopped. There was a putative peace treaty in the air, a settlement you know, of the whole issue. And Boris stopped that and said, we have to fight. We have to fight. We have to fight. He told Delansky. He flew in. Boris Johnson. So Britain has always had this lead role. Now, Keir Starmer's prime minister, and he seems, in theory, to be maintaining that, but he's appointed Jonathan Powell as his defense supremo, and Jonathan Powell has always been, of course, you take the government line now, you're, you're right, but he's always been an ad advocate of territorial compromise on Ukraine. So these are difficult days for Ukraine. We're fighting to the last Ukrainian. You realize how exhausted Ukraine is by this war. Exhausted. Now, um, Russia, too. Russia's losing. Well, Russia, if you include in injuries, deaths and injuries, then it's 1,500 a day. Uh, colossal. But um, that'll slow down over winter, obviously. We're entering now the winter period. Things, the ground freezes or become well it doesn't freeze it froze you can keep going but the intense cold and the mud and the cold really defeats the soldiers they haven't got on either side the the um the clothing to fight through the cold it's intensely cold um so we'll have a po slow down of fighting in any case the of course, people talk about, oh, well, Trump can put pressure on Zelensky for democracy. What a load of twaddle. Ukraine's under martial law. It's got its back against the wall. There can be no elections in Ukraine. How could people vote? Or oh, even if they could. I mean, um, half the population is displaced now. Um, easily. Half the population is displaced. So, what do we do? What do we do about Ukraine? We got Trump coming. He says he will fix it within one day, even before his inauguration. Well, that's dream on, Mr. Trump. But he, I think he will fix it. And I suspect whether it's on terms the West really want. They'd see, the West should have gone for a peace deal in the summer, but hadn't got any leadership to do so. Um, and now the the best moment for Ukraine has passed. And now Donald Trump is... I don't think the West believed that Donald Trump was going to be elected. That was very foolish of people in the West. They could have seen it coming, surely, but there's very little wisdom and leadership in the West. So what have we got? We've got... We've got a situation here um, where we need a resolution of the Ukraine issue uh, to put before the Russians and to put before Trump. And dear Ukraine, battered and exhausted, 
will have to come on board. So the what is the obvious solution? The obvious solution is that Russia gets Crimea. Uh, it always was Russian anyway, you know, historically. I mean, well, actually, it was it belonged to us, but Stalin exiled them in the biggest act of ethnic cleansing of the, or one of the biggest acts of ethnic cleansing of the 20th century, early 20th century. Stalin uh, removed the entire Tatar population from Crimea, and now it's Russian. Um, and then it was gifted to Ukraine under some sort of little deal to uh, when the Soviet Union was the Soviet Union. It's irrelevant. It can go back to Russia. Um, and then the Donbass, uh, whatever they are, the Hetsk and uh, Konetsk or whatever, those two heavily industrial provinces of Ukraine, it's close to the Russian border that Russia has occupied. Um, yeah. Autonomy. That was always the agreement, the, always the idea. And uh, people there can choose to have Ukraine passports or Russian passports or both dual citizenship. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Sort of like, um, in fact, in a sense, shared sovereignty, like like uh, Trieste between the wars, you know, an international city. It was Trieste between the wars. It was a good approach. It was what we always wanted for Jerusalem Corpus Separatum. So um, let's see what the UN resolution stands for. Uh, but, of course, those days are gone. But we can do something for the two disputed provinces of Ukraine along those lines. I mean, much simpler for Ukraine gets rid of a lot of the Russian vote. Well, I mean, of course, they can still choose to vote in Ukraine, yeah, just as they can choose to vote in Russia. They can, or both. You know, I hold dual citizenship, American and British. So I can vote in the United States of America. I can vote in Britain. Actually, as an expatriate voter, it's quite difficult to vote in the USA. Um, I did make the effort to do it for Obama, but I haven't done it since. Um, not in this current Trump election. But anyway, you, you can have dual citizens that vote in both places, or one or other, or neither. Um, so there's many options here. But, and, um, and an autonomous government for Donetsk and Luhansk can raise its own taxes. Um, to sustain itself. That's it, you know. Done, dusted, Mr. Trump, Mr. Putin, and poor Mr. Zelensky. But it makes life much simpler, much simpler, and we can just get on with it. Uh, Ukraine can't join NATO, but it can join the European Union. And it should, if, uh, mind you, there are corruption issues you've got to sort out in order for it to do so, but it should join the European Union. Um, have a little cherry on the pie. Ukraine's costing Europe enough now. It'll cost it less to bring it in the fold. Um, all these places can join the EU. They just can't join NATO. You can't have Ukraine joining NATO because it puts Russia's knickers in a twist. And anyway, we promised it wouldn't. No, it's just a verbal promise. Never mind. We made the promise... Uh, Germany and, and the United States promised that uh, Ukraine would never join NATO years ago. It was an assurance they gave to Russia. You can't cheat. Anyway, it doesn't matter because Trump won't let it come into NATO anyway, so it's sort of relevance now for the future. Who cares about that? Um, Ukraine does? Well, I wish... Ukraine's interests were being considered, but they're not really. This is a slugging match between Russia and the West being played out on the Ukraine's soil. So there you have it. That's my personal recipe for 
piece. You may not like it, but it'll do. Andy, shush. It's the dog at the door. Well, the postman just come. Hey! What a noise. I'm sorry. Anyway, dogs don't like postmen. Ukrainians don't like Russians anymore. I mean, not the Ukrainian Ukrainians. It's a tough life, isn't it, really, for everybody? Um, There's no justice with peace. Peace with justice is a daydream. But peace is achievable. And you can have fair play going forward. God have mercy on Ukraine and Russia for that matter. It's, we don't need it it's to go on and on like another Vietnam. So Donald Trump is right in that. We need an accommodation that'll bring this whole ridiculous waste of life to an end. God bless you. Thank you.